Hello, my name is Eric Carpenter. I'm an education designer with the University of Colorado Boulder's Science Discovery Program. This video is intended to help teachers make snow tubes, an innovative way to bring snow study indoors. They feature different layers commonly found in the snow, including ice layers, sand layers, and different densities of snow. We use these in an inquiry-based model to help students understand the relationship between weather events in high mountain regions and the formation of the snowpack. My name is Michaela Madalinski and I am an undergraduate in education at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Today we will be making simulated snowpack cores or snow tubes like this one. It's a really fast and easy way to bring snow science indoors. We use the snow tubes with graphs of weather data for student inquiry focused on weather, water, and climate. The process for making snow tubes begins the night before. In order to make the ice layers, you're going to take your plastic tubing, cut it into five two-centimeter sections. Then you're going to seal those sections with waterproof tape. After that, you're going to fill three of those with half a centimeter of water and two of them with one centimeter of water. Then you're going to let them freeze overnight. Afterwards, you can pop them out and they should look like this. Once you have all your materials together, you can begin making your snow tube. You're going to need to make sure that you have your rubber stopper, your plastic tube, your snow, your sand, your ice layers, and your special tool to compact it all together. So in order to begin making your snow tube, you're going to take your master data sheet, which tells you the recipe for making it. I'm going to start with two centimeters of snow, which is more compacted than the other snow because it's the first snowfall of the year. So I'm using partially melted snow. I'm going to put on the bottom there. That looks like about two centimeters. We use a standard ruler to check that our measurements are correct. Two centimeters. Perfect. Next I'm going to add in a little bit of sand to represent my wind a bit. When you're first starting, it might help to use a funnel. I just want to get about two millimeters in there. That looks about right. Then I'm going to add three more centimeters of snow. and use my compressing tool to get it down in there. Again, I'm going to check using my ruler to see if I got it about right. Yep, looks like three centimeters. As I told you in the beginning, snow tubes are made out of snow, sand, and ice layers. For your ice layer, you're going to pop it out of these special discs that you made before and place it into your snow tube. It doesn't land, always land exactly right, but this time it did. If it didn't, you would just take your compressing stick and push it down in there. After that, you're going to add three more centimeters of snow and keep going, following your snow tube master data sheet until your snow tube is completed. One of the great things about snow tubes is that they can help students to learn about compression of snow and how it changes over time. So the bottom of our snow tubes are denser and darker colored, and the snow we're going to use at the top to simulate fresher snow that's fallen is going to be a, li a lighter, whiter color, and we're not going to compress it as much. So the last step in the recipe tells me to add 10 more centimeters of snow and finish it off with a sprinkling of dirt.
check that it's about 10 centimeters from my last ice layer, which it is, and then add my sprinkling of dirt. After that, I'm going to put the sapper on and the snow tube is finished.